The monkeys in the kitchen. Hello, this is Richard, and I'm here with the fifth part of our mini-series about Theo the monkey. The three monkeys were not cops. That much was obvious. They weren't wearing uniforms, but that didn't prove anything, as they could have been working undercover. Both Neat and Sifu could see by the way that Theo was talking to them that they were friends. Yes, he was clearly angry with them for turning up uninvited, but it was more like a family dispute than an all-out war. All doubt disappeared when one of the newcomers started to pick nits out of Theo's hair, a sure sign of monkey affection. Theo appeared to calm down and accepted the situation. It seemed unlikely that there would be any more kung fu this evening. Sifu called the lesson to an end. There was no way that Sifu and Neat could find out how or why the three monkeys had arrived at the lesson. They would have needed the power of monkey speech to understand that. The two humans left the village hall together. When they were on the street, Sifu said to Neat, I am starting to doubt my instincts. What do you mean, Sifu? asked Neat, who was wondering himself how his teacher would react to the new situation. The story that we are to believe is this. A lone monkey is fighting for justice. Many people in the city and some of the editors of the newspapers see this as the true story. They hint the authorities are painting him as a bad monkey because he knows their darkest secrets. Meanwhile, a gang of criminal monkeys is attacking people in the street. I too have been prepared to believe this story, but now it turns out he is not a lone monkey. He has three friends. Why is that bad, Sifu? asked Neat. But as the words left his lips, he realized the answer. Sifu merely confirmed it when he said, Because, Neat, one monkey is a loner, but four monkeys looks like a gang. As it happened, Theo was as anxious as anyone to know how the three monkeys had found him. If friends could find him, so could foes. He knew them, of course, from his time at the zoo. They were the three girl monkeys, whose names were Ziglinda, Hyacinth, and Fleur. He only heard their full story when they reached the high branches of his oak tree in the woods. Mr. Grabber had taken them to see the police cadets do their stuff at the big ceremony in the garden of the mayor's house. When Theo appeared and started making trouble, the girls slipped out of their handcuffs and joined in the fight on Theo's side. They followed Theo as he escaped over the rooftops and they saw him jump onto the roof of a train just as it was leaving the station. The train on the next platform left shortly afterwards, and that was the one they caught. But of course, they did not understand that it was running on a different line to a different destination. It rattled and shook its way through suburbia. And although they saw some inviting gardens, some with tempting apple trees, they did not pass through any place where a monkey could hide out for long. They spent the next few days travelling all over the rail network, frequently changing trains and exploring suburbia. They picked fruit from the gardens, and once they found an open window in a house that backed onto the railway line. They climbed in and raided the fridge. That was a splendid midnight feast. Eventually they caught a train that passed through Burbington Woods. Like Theo before them, they recognised it as a place where a monkey could live. The trees were wonderful, but as creatures of comfort who had spent their lives in zoos, they were not well adapted to finding food in the woods. So they wandered into town to see what they could raid, looking through windows, and that was when they saw Theo, Neat and Sifu doing their martial arts class. Theo listened to the whole story patiently, remembering Sifu's words that you must stay calm 
in order to stay safe. But almost everything the girls told him filled him with alarm. Zieglinda pinched Theo's cheek affectionately and said, You don't seem very pleased to see us. Couldn't you do with a spot of help? asked Fleur. Yes, we made a great team when we were fighting the cops the other day, added Hyacinth. I need you like a police truncheon over my head, snapped Theo. That's a nice way to greet three girls, exclaimed Fleur. Yes, what have we done wrong now? asked Siglinda. Well, to start with, you've been stealing, said Theo. Look who's talking! You're top of the police most wanted list, accused Fleur. Only because Mr Grabber and his corrupt friends blame me for their crimes, replied Theo. And even worse, you must have been sighted a hundred times on your journey. The police won't be far behind. The girls claimed that nobody had seen them. Theo found that too much to believe. And he was right, because at 8am the next morning, the monkey cops arrived in Burbington Woods. Fortunately, the mayor's office tipped off the press that the hunt for the fugitive monkeys was moving out to the suburbs and to the wooded areas outside the city. Little did he realise that Theo would be tuning in to the radio news. Who would have suspected that a monkey could be so smart as to do that? The monkey cops were soon rushing through the trees while human and canine police searched at ground level. Theo gnashed his teeth. See what you've done! He berated the girls. You've brought the cops down on us and now we're as good as caught. What? Is this... All you were made of? asked Fleur. We thought you were a hero. You give yourself up if you want to, but we intend to go down fighting. Let's go get them, girls! No! Don't be fools! said Theo. We must hide now and live to fight another day. Theo's right, said Hyacinth. If the cops are searching the woods, we need to hide in the village. Fortunately, the cops were coming from the other direction, and the band of monkeys managed to slip out of the woods and over a high wall. The place they arrived at was the school. Around the front, the children were already arriving. The monkeys climbed into an outbuilding. They found themselves in the kitchens, By chance, it was the safest place in the school. The cooks would not be arriving to make lunch for another couple of hours. Theo started to look for a good place to hide. He tried cupboard doors. The girls did the same. Hyacinth found the fridge. She opened the door and saw a big mixing bowl. Now, when it comes to food, all monkeys are pretty smart. She knew right away that she should take off the lid and dip her paw into the mixture. She tasted it. Yummy! It was thick and chocolatey. The cook had prepared it the day before for the pudding. Hey guys, get get a load of this, she called out. The two girls were soon over, and so was Theo. I thought I said no stealing, he commanded. But the other monkeys took no notice. Mm-hmm. This is simply delicious, said Fleur, who was already pour deep in chocolate mix. Theo's nostrils began to twitch. He was, after all, the monkey who loved chocolate. As you will know if you have heard the earlier stories, which started before he became a crime fighter back in the day when he was young and irresponsible. But for a long time now, he had avoided his favourite food for the very good reason that he loved it too much. In fact, he went crazy for it. 
totally, totally crazy. You might say he went ape for it. But that's not the best pun, because monkeys aren't actually apes. They're, well, monkeys. If you want to know one difference, most monkeys have tails, whilst apes don't. But that's by the by. The point here is that Theo was very tempted indeed to try the chocolate. Especially when Hyacinth urged him. Go on, try just a teeny weeny bit. Well, I might as well, thought Theo. No human is going to eat it now that monkeys have had their paws in it. And so he tried just a little. Meanwhile, Fleur had gone further into the fridge and found six more bowls. This is what I call a gorgeous breakfast, she said. In fact, the four friends were gorging so much on their gorgeous breakfast that they did not notice the cook come into the kitchen. But she saw them and she quietly backed out of the door before running to the school office and saying breathlessly to the secretary, They're... they're here! The monkeys! They're in the kitchen! Minutes later, the peaceful village of Burpington was disturbed by the wailing of police sirens and the throbbing of a helicopter over the school playground. The monkey cops jumped into the kitchen via the same window that the fugitives had entered. Now we've got you, said the sergeant, who was still smarting from the blows he had received from the previous fight. The six highly trained monkeys were hungry for revenge. Theo, his head sky high from chocolate, swivelled his head and staggered from side to side. Take that, thief! said the sergeant, and he flew at him with a high kick. Theo rolled away from it, and the sergeant landed head first into a pudding bowl. The other cops followed through in close formation with kicks and punches, exactly following the precise sequence they had practiced in training. Theo and the girls continued to roll and loll around deceptively deflecting their blows, falling under their opponent's feet and tripping them up. In fact, they hardly struck out themselves. The police were practically beating themselves up. Their own misguided force worked against them. They banged their heads on tables, hit their fists against walls, and got caught up in shelves. Theo tipped a bag of flour over one cop. Fleur poured custard over the constables. And Hyacinth flung bins at the law enforcers. The outlaws escaped through the window into the school playground. Children pressed their noses against classroom windows and saw the monkeys dodge the human cops. One policeman fired a taser, missed and hit the deputy head teacher with 50,000 volts. A huge cheer went up all around the school. The monkeys were over the wall. And that's the end of this episode. So now that Theo's cover has been blown, he'll have to find a new hiding place. But to find out what happens next, he'll have to wait a few weeks, I'm afraid. Because Bertie's very kindly given me a holiday because I'm getting married next weekend. And my fiancé did insist that I take some time off while we go on honeymoon. Bertie wanted to come too, but she wouldn't allow him. But I promise that I will be back before too long with more Theo stories. So for now from me, Richard. Goodbye. Richard. Goodbye.